Cooks, before we opened up this, this dialogue on camera, you said to me, MTD gets around, and we do, but we don't come in many places of this, or with machines of this size. This is your latest, or one of your latest purchases, the SFM machine. Why do you buy machines of this size, Cooks? Uh, for the rigidity, and the, we're doing a lot of heavy work pieces now, Paul. That's where our business has gone. And what sort of weight apart? Uh, this machine can handle up to nearly 15 ton. We have done 10 ton components on it. 10 to 15 tons, that's huge. What, what sort of industry would that be for? Uh, steel mills, paper mills, very specialist stuff. And with it being a, a machine of, of this size, there's a lot of importance around the weight and rigidity. How did you find out about SFM and what, what, what led you down this path? Uh, the SFM, we've dealt with Ward High Tech before. Uh, they've got a good reputation. So naturally we looked at SFM as our first point to call. Now let's talk about this machine specifically. Do, do you know the swing? Do you know what size of diameter you can, you can put on the machine and what length of part? Yeah, um, it's a 1400 swing over the bed, a meter over the cross slide, four meters between centers. And you've got a turret on here as well, rather than a tool post, which can be a little bit different. Sometimes people opt for a tool post. Why did you like the turret? Uh, it came standard as the machine, uh, but it's very solid. We've had no problems. I mean, we've been cutting 10 ton work pieces with big cuts and it's not, not faulted. And I suppose with a turret you get more tools as well, don't you, than a, a four-station tool post? Absolutely, so we do our roughing cycle, semi-finishing and finishing all in one setting. Now there are some other features on this machine. What about swarf evacuation? Because if, you, if you're starting off with a 15-ton billet, you're going to be removing some metal. I, I notice this has got two conveyors, one at the front and the back, is that right? Yeah, that was a big consideration, Paul. Um, obviously when you're cutting big pieces like that, you get a lot of swarf. So this particular machine's got twin swarf conveyors getting all that metal away. And also the access to the machine. We, luckily here we can see there's, there's no part on it, so the doors are fully open, but they, they contract as well, don't they? So it's very easy to get in and out. Yeah, fully enclosed, but then to load the workpiece, obviously you need the room. And the advantage of this machine, the doors swing wide open. And, and it's very neat the way the doors concertina too, so it doesn't take up any extra footprint than you would you'd hope. That's right, Paul, yeah. Now the tailstock is another thing, how are you going to move something like that, Cooks? Do you, do, do you do it in programme or how does it work? I go to the gym every morning, uh, Paul. But now this, this, this particular machine... Drink your iron brew. <laughs> um, there's a switch on the back, it comes up on rollers and you can actually glide it around with one hand. So it's dead easy? Yeah, very easy. Now also you mentioned to me about a steady. You mentioned that you, you use fixed steadies on this machine, but what you have noticed is because of the power and the stability, sometimes you don't need the steady on a, on a larger part as well. That's right, compared to some of the previous machines we've had, where we get vibrational issues. Because of the casting and rigidity of this machine, we can actually machine the same components, sometimes even without a steady. Now this was the first machine you bought, the second one has got a slightly smaller chuck but a longer bed. What, what was your, the principal idea behind that purchase? That's right, again that's a heavy duty machine, uh, can well, handle up to 8 tonne. Uh, but we were finding that th this is on the limit of some of the components we're handling, they're going to about 5 metres. And also that machine benefits from live tooling. So again, single setup we can do drilling and tapping and things like that. So you've got a nice blend then between this one with a huge chuck and the second machine, I'm not going to say that's not a huge chuck, because that's still a big chuck, but it's got a longer turn in length and you've got mill drill function. So are you, are you kind of reducing operations by having that mill drill? Absolutely, yeah. So we're doing a lot of the roughing on this big one and then doing the final finishing and milling operations on the smaller one. It's great to see one of these machines, but to see two is something else. The, uh, the control on this, this is a Fanuc control, so you've got experience in Fanuc. Is there any difference between a normal Fanuc and the Fanuc that the SFM machine has got? Uh, not really, Paul. That's another thing we looked at because we didn't want too many differences. We've got a lot of, a lot of other machines with Fanuc and we don't need to transfer you know, code from one to the other without messing about. And it's all the same? That's right. Final point, what can you bury up the spindles of these machines, Cooks, in terms of diameter? What sort of shaft diameter? Up to 10 inch. Is that applicable on both the first and second machine? On the smaller ones, 250mm ball with a rear chuck. OK, a final note on the word for Ward High Tech, because they obviously supplied these. What's your thoughts on them? Um, very good, reliable, service is excellent. Um, a nice range of machinery they offer. As I said, we've had no problems, very reliable. But when we have called them, the response has been excellent. Brilliant. Thank you, Cooks. Thank you, Paul.